Hello, I'm Phil Chen, and you're watching four bass players only with my friend here, John. You're doing a great job, John. Keep it up. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, John Liebman here. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. We are here today in the world headquarters of Framus and Warwick in Markneukirchen, Germany, sometimes known as Marco Filchen. Mark, that's right. <laughs> and we are here with... That's the Jamaican pronunciation. That's right. And we are here with, of course, Phil Chen. How you doing, Phil? Wonderful. Now that I'm here in Germany, I'm here with you, with HP and the staff. What else could I ask? What could be better? It's great to have a, a follow-up interview. We interviewed you a couple of years ago, and uh, we got the story. It was a great story. Growing up in Jamaica, your father, your uncle, how you moved to England, and Jeff Beck, and Scatterbrain, and Rod Stewart, and everybody else. That interview is still up on the site, of course. Go to ForBassPlayersOnly.com, search Phil Chen, and it'll pop right up. Well, let's let's catch up a little bit. You're uh, you're always going somewhere. Every time I see you, we happen to be in a different city, sometimes even in a different country. What has been keeping you busy? What uh, What's going on these days? Well, I've, I, I've been working with Robert Krieger of The Doors. Oh, yeah. um, well, we went out with Ray, but Ray had passed on, and Robert decided to use his son to sing and go and play The Doors' greatest hits. And I love The Doors, and I mean, what else? You know, for me, that's a great honor to be working with one of America's classic uh, rock group, The Doors, and be playing all the old Doors song. It's interesting because they, they never used a bass player for their live shows, that did they? correct, until they heard me. <laughs> 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 no, the reason for um, to have a bass player is that, as Ray said, he could free up his hand and he could do more, and it also gave it um, a different sound. And... Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why they chose me, but I'm with them. <laughs> and wh what else are you doing? You're doing uh, clinics and classes and things like that? Yeah, I do um, clinics and I do sessions. I'm doing a clinic next week in Finland somewhere. I can't forget the name. With Richard Bailey, the drummer that we did um, we did Blow by Blow with. You see, I used, when I was living in London, I did a lot of sessions with him. And um, he... To me, is one of the the best drummer for me, complimentary because he's from the island. He has the island thing and he has the island feel. And um, in music, the feel is very important. When you're with the right drummer and a feeling, it happens. It feels good, makes you want to dance, and that is what music is about. You know, in the olden days when they used to have drum, bass, keyboard, guitar, da da da. No, everybody's doing it in the bedroom, and they oh, is it like you're going to a doctor's office. Oh, um, yeah, we'll see in about an hour. Okay, bass now, and they overdub, you know. Uh, it's different. So it's a different um, type of music, but I'm used to um, playing with people. So um, when you play with people, you get inspired by them. You get the feeling, and I don't know what to play. It just, <laughs> God give me, it oozes out. Well, in addition to the technology and the fact that people are maybe not as together in an ensemble setting like you're talking about, do you think the the current uh, upcoming generation of musicians still has that feel, or you know, are they doing it right, or do they need a little guidance? Do you think? Great question. The problem with today's society is it's a different society. You see, Marvin Gaye, Otis Red, in that period of music, it was. It it came back, it came from um, like the Billy Holiday, Dinah Washington, Ella Fitzgerald, you know. So you know the groups today are different, and um, you know you have um, like like John Legend. I don't know who John Legend is. Well, I know, but I'm a Marvin, Otis Redding, and then you have Alisa Key. They are great. Don't get me wrong, but I'm an Arita, uh, Roberta Flack. Um, you know, Eva Cassidy type of thing. So it's a different, different period, different, um, different songs, and I guess I'm an old guy. <laughs> so I'm a, a classic guy. 
I love that old style music, you know. That's the very music is completely different. But uh, are, are, the, are, are they taking the right approach? Are they giving it the feel that it needs, or is there something lacking because of the technology, because of the fact that everybody's doing it by themselves in their bedroom? That's what I'm getting at. Okay, they're doing it in the right approach, in their approach. But you must remember, a lot of them weren't brought up on the classic Otis, Marvin, Ella Fitzgerald, so they don't know. So what they're doing is um, is their interpretation of today's society music, and it's just it's just different because um, the society today is is completely different. You know, there's a lot of rap music and you know all kind of crazy thing happening in the world, which wasn't happening in the time in the sixties and so. Mm. So it's different. Yeah. Cool sitting here with Phil Chen. I didn't expect names like Ella Fitzgerald and Dinah Washington to come up. That's very cool. What uh, what kind of equipment are you using? You're holding a, a famous guitar, and, and I know amongst your arsenal of basses, you play Warwick and some others. So what? Yeah. tell me about your equipment. Well, I love the Warwick bass, the streamer bass. Ah. They have a red one on there. I'm, I'm kind of falling in love with it, feng shui. And then um, I, I love the guitar, too. Um, I play a Fender, and I play um, a P and a Jazz, P with the Labella strings, the Jameson sound, I like that old school, yeah. and then of course the Jazz with Rota sound, the Jacka school, and then of course the Streamer is a different style of music, it's slap, very, very good, very clear, different. So you have to, when you strap on a bass, you got to ch ch change <laughs> your memory banks because it's a different, yeah, it's a different application. How about amplifiers? Oh, um, the amp I really like is the the, the Warwick 1000. Mm. First of all, it's light, yes. sounds great, and it has two different channels, which is really, um, you can use two different bass and you don't, and you can just set whatever you want. Brilliant, super genius there. They're really becoming popular. Uh, how about the future, Phil? Uh, you, uh, you, you made a uh, a comment, and the way you phrased it, I thought was perfect. You said, "I still have a lot of notes left oh. in me," and I know you still do. What else would you would, do? You hope to do? Do you plan to do in the future? Well, I've been doing uh, more a lot of teaching, you know, and like. I think I, well, having come from Jamaica, I have that rhythm in me for the reggae stuff and the, and the island calypso stuff. And I see that as an avenue that is me. So I am venturing into that island style reggae thing. While well, you have other great people doing different style and the Motown stuff as well. I love the Motown because of Jameson. And I do play guitar. I just finished doing the Standing in the Shadows of Motown live with James Jameson Jr. playing bass. I was playing guitar along with Alan Slutsky. So that is part of my chemistry because I grew up with all the old Motown stuff as well as, you know, Patsy Cline, Jim Reeve, um, Ruby and the Romantics, Bert Camford, all uh, Roger Williams, all that stuff in Jamaica. We always listen to music on a melody we never s we never see color we never see if they were country singer we just love the songs mm -hmm. last question phil i don't remember if i asked you this last time or not what would you be if you were not a bass player or a guitar player something outside of music i would have the best chinese takeout <laughs> no um i don't know what i do i really love cooking you know um, um, anything that is kind of um, artistic, you know, wood making and all the thing. Anything, you know, because my dad was a really great calligraphy artist. He, when I was 13, he wrote me a poem, Chinese calligraphy. He, um, and he, he did all the, the writing from Jamaica to China. The, the, is what they call it, classic calligraphy. And it, the, he, it said, Master your music, 
your future is immeasurable. So being, a, I got the artistic side of him. So I just do, I love cooking and gardening and all that, the simple stuff. That sounds like a powerful and, and beautiful uh, keepsake memory from your father. There you yeah, and um, he, he, all he did, he saw me playing on the veranda with a homemade guitar plugged in a radio. Yeah. He never seen me play with, you know, the Stones, you know, where Keith Richards run, or Rod Stewart at the Madison Square Garden at the Forum or the Doors anywhere. But he had a vision. So every time I go on stage, I take him with me. And um, In here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I take him with me. And, um, you know, again, I think this is applicable to everyone. There are great opportunities out there. You can turn crisis into great opportunity. Don't complain and master your music because their future is immeasurable. Phil, it's always uh, inspiring and very moving talking with you, especially today, I think. It's great catching up with you, and I look forward to our next follow-up interview, and you'll bring us up to date on all the other cool stuff that you no doubt have in the works. Likewise, this is the man that keeps the bass player alive through online. And one more thing I must say. I am so appreciative of Warwick especially HP and the wonderful staff, Tordis, Flo and everybody that is doing such an amazing job of getting all the bass players together in one spot, regardless of color, style, creed, whatever it is. It's all about music and he's, this is the only company I know of that does this to get everybody because, and also music has no boundary. No, it doesn't say color, it doesn't say slap, it doesn't say whatever it is. It's just wonderful music, no boundaries. Thank you, HP. <laughs> HP, Hans Peter Wilfer, founder and owner of Warwick. I couldn't have stated it any better myself, Phil. That was great. That was beautiful. With Phil Chen from the Warwick and Framus World Headquarters, Marek Neukirchen, Germany. I'm John Liebman. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. Thanks, John. The man. You demand. <laughs>